So we're getting ready to do what? Second pour. Second pour, and today we're gonna have Isaac B -B Bowman. It's a pour barrel finish. So join us right after this. <sighs> So Jeffrey, I was looking at today's uh, uh, body of work we were going to have to go through. Yes. And it looked like we're going to imbibe on another port finished uh, whiskey of some sort. It's funny, you always tend to drag out port finishes. You know, it's incredible how much I do like them considering how much I like extremely hot and spicy whiskey. So Isaac Bowman coming out of Virginia? Yes, that is correct. It is a 46.92, so 46%. 92 proof. It is a port barrel finish, which means it spent some time hanging out in some bourbon barrels, and then later they poured all that into some old port, port cast. Port cast. And let yeah. it sit around for maybe another couple of years in that port It cast. could have been 12 seconds, and it still would have counted, actually. So we've had some of this on Whiskey Pop this week. Yes, we did. So now it is our second pour. We've poured us some. I say, uh -oh. let's go in and smell it. I know what's going to smell it. Now it's time to second pour. So Zane, tell me, how excited are you for this whiskey? I'm actually really excited. Not just because I do like port finished whiskeys, but because this one, <laughs> but because- Hang on, can we clarify how much you like port finished whiskey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I got a Basil Hayden back here in the yeah, cabinet. Yeah, I, mean, I got this one, there's okay. an Angel Envy float around here somewhere. The thing is, is that what, this is not, uh, like the most mainstream of whiskeys and bourbons. It's well, it's new. Yeah. <clears throat> and ish. Ish. It's the ish. Yeah. And sometimes finding the right ish is the best thing to put in your glass. Ish. Ish. Yeah. yeah. So again, this one has uh, a lot of, uh, of excitement for me because it's something I haven't had before. Now it's funny. I've, we've seen some port barrel finishes lately. Okay. This is I would say I would say is the lightest port barrel finish. Yeah, I've seen. it does still have the rosado look to it. Yeah, but it's not as red. It's not, a, it's not as this, red. Like, I, we might pull out that Basil Hayden here a little yeah, bit and look. Basil out. Hayden is that Basil red. Hayden. It must spend like twenty years in a port barrel mm -hmm, <laughs> for sure. But uh, no. So Jeffrey, while I'm getting ready to nose my glass, yeah, let's know, what are want... the official notes okay, we're going to be looking? Okay, the official at? nose for this should be ripe. Plums, toffee, and baking spices. So baking spices usually tend to me to believe you gotta all spice plums. Feel it down in your plums. Must feel it in my plums. You feel that down in your plums. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. So okay, so that's the nose for this. Yeah. So let's let's smell it. Yeah. Okay, so right off the bat, I definitely I know it's <laughs> stating you smell plums. <laughs> I smell plums. No, that's that is right because. Basically, uh, a port barrel is going to be, it's a, it's a, just a wine. Yeah. Is really what yeah. it is. So you're going to have the tannins of wines into this. And, and that's going to be that. But I would still say, based on that color, I would say it's not spending a ton of time in that port barrel. Let's go in and taste this. What yeah, 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 sure. It does have a little heat. It's right there on the top of the palate, or right on the top of the tongue, right? But it has that candied fruit flavor. Yeah, that 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 fruit flavor is all throughout. I think it has to be the port. Yeah, no, and it which allows the uh, the heat of the the bourbon portion of it itself to feel separate. You know, a little I, bit. I think one thing we don't talk about when we do whiskey reviews, especially when we're talking about finishes, like mm -hmm. port barrel finishes. I would wish, I wish that they would be straight up with some of these whiskey companies and tell us what wine this really came from. Oh. So like this, I bet it's because they don't even know. I mean, they gotta know. I think most distilleries are very picky about their mash bills and their well, flavors. Maybe. I mean, I just they have to. Go. I suspect they have to be going to the wine producer and trying their wine to see if that's the barrels we want our whiskey to be in. Yeah, that could. Be. I'd be curious about that though, right? The industry, there's a myriad of twists and turns that we have no clue about. Maybe you work for a distillery that does this. We'd yeah. love to hear from you. We'd be interested in what knowledge you may have about how do they choose what port barrels to put finished whiskey in. Because, I mean, is it just like, yeah, hey, just give me a, you know, they, you know, they contact, uh, you know, Bollinger or somebody. You know, I said that right. Yeah. I'm not Italian. <laughs> and they're like, just send me your port Morgan barrels. Morgan Davis. And <laughs> <laughs> What was it, two old guys, Bartles and James? Yeah. 
Have you found yourself realizing that you need someone to thank for your support? Bartles and James, Jeffrey and Zane. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your support. <laughs> and thank you for your support. So the palette on this, they say stone fruits, pecan praline, cookie dough, Cookie and, dough. And a dash of clove. So now the clove, I always get cloves. It has to be, there's, it's gotta be the rye end of the whiskey that's giving you that flavor yeah, when, potentially. When, when you have a port or a wine finished barrel, yeah. anything, I do pick up what they're gonna say is the, the cooking spices. Now, I always catch more of that. Being that it's a bourbon, obviously you know they're putting in a new charred oak. Maybe they're really charring the shit out of these barrels. Yeah, they could be. But... Or maybe they're charring the port barrel too. And that will add some of that heat and spice in yeah. there. The, the port portion of this is not nearly as strong, strong. as no. the Basil Hayden's was, for sure. Oh, no. Let me get that Basil Hayden yeah. now. While he's looking, I would say straight up, this one's probably even more balanced than the Basil Hayden. And more people would probably like this uh, because it's not overly whiny. <laughs> did you just laugh when I did? Yep. Weirdo. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so here's that. It's kind of hard because somebody's been drinking this bottle. Oh, you should have told me I'd have brought my other bottle. Well, shit, I'm wrong. They look pretty close to almost oh, the same there you go. color. No, no, no. that's just a little yeah, darker. Yeah, that's a hell of darker. That's a little darker. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's a little darker. Yeah. But so, yeah, I mean, and I've not been a big fan. No, of course, I knew that. I knew that. But I have been. Yeah, you have been. But that's what I was telling them is, like, first of all, we're going to rate this. Hey, let's compare little, it. Let's do it. Let's compare it. What the? Let's do it. But I will say this is, like, I like really strong bourbons. But there are certain days that all I want is one of these pork finished uh, whiskeys over anything else. It's weird. All right, so this is the uh, Basil Hayden 10, is it 10 years or is it just, no, it's just dark rye. It's just the dark rye. But it's a pork barrel, right? Oh, and Ooh, then- Ooh, now it is definitely and then, way more porty. Oh my God, I love it. Now, before we drink that, I wanna say the finish on the Isaac Bowman, right? Yes. Okay. They say it's a medium length with just a dash of sweet. Totally get that. No, for sure. I, it's gone pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And this will be gone pretty quick because I'm going to drink all this ish. Now, the Basil Hayden. It, now, to be fair, it is a rye whiskey. Which is a different animal. It's going to be a little spicier, a little warmer. However, it was aged in this barrel longer, I guarantee you. With the, with the, as dark it is from the tannins, oh, it's definitely... Oh, sure. Let's go in there. Oh, my God, yes. Woo. I literally feel like I'm drinking wine. It's wine. It's so much. This is wine bourbon. Such a stronger wine. Hot finish. damn, that's good. Yeah. That's some good ish. Let's rate Isaac Bowman. Yeah, you have our five rated system. Five is the best it can be. <laughs> and number one is like, yeah, you know, everything's at Why least am I a trying? One. Yeah. No, I'm suspecting we're going to come across a zero at some point. We will cut to a zero, I guess, but uh, we haven't tried gasoline. No, try not. I to. will say this much is I feel like as a noob, this is a three finger pour. Really? I think because the smoothness lays down the heat that this one would have, that it would be so much easier to drink. And I think that there's enough complication that people could really start digesting this and understanding some different notes. Even if they've never experienced uh, someone come and go, oh, you taste candy apple or you taste a little hint of clove. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm getting. So you're saying it's complicated enough. It's but complicated not enough. Complicated. But this gives them a starting point that, you know, complication a lot of times comes with heat. Not always. Sometimes complication comes with There's just so much in there, it's hard for you to pull yeah. out what's going on yeah. in there. And I think as a new whiskey drinker coming in, you're already feeling pretty inadequate about tasting whiskey. Sure. So if you're jumping into a whiskey that's very complicated, it's like Gentleman Jack we had recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentleman Jack, it's vanilla, it's caramel. There that's it, go. that's right. It was Not hard to this, the measure. This you might this, be going. You're like, well, I don't know what ah. I'm tasting. Yeah. So I think I think you're right. I think it's for an entry level, it's probably good for a yeah. port. Now for me, I mean, I gotta try it one more time. Oh, come on, it's good. It's a good whiskey. I think as a noob, how much is this? Dollars. Yeah, I think I think it depends on where you're buying it. I yeah. think it's somewhere between it's, it's $50. Yeah, right? somewhere between that price. Yeah, it's it's between $50 and $50. I've seen it I've seen it cheaper and I've seen it a little more expensive. I think it just depends on where you're buying it. Yeah, no, it it does <laughs> Okay. To be fair, full disclosure, 
I did pay a little more than $50. That's because of the necessity of needing to get this bottle. But. Required it. Yeah, required it. However, I should have only paid $50. Okay, so based on that, I'm gonna say a two. Yeah, you know, I don't hate you for saying that. Um, it's not a bad whiskey. Now, a two's not a bad rating. Uh, here's the thing. Let's be let's be honest. A new whiskey drinker is not gonna love this. Whiskey. They're not gonna they're not gonna love it, and they're not gonna want to pay fifty dollars and then be like, oh, this is what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm getting at is if I'm footing the bill. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm paying for it, and I say, oh, here, you as a newbie, try my whiskey. They're going to be like, oh, okay. You bought this one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did. It's getting better. It's, it's getting, getting better. better. <laughs> oh, so how much did that cost you, Jeff? Zero. That's <laughs> right. That's the best price of whiskey ever. Yeah, that's right. That's, a, that's, that's why I'm drinking your bottle of Basil Wait, That's, yeah, that's my bottle, bottle of Basil Lake. Because, you know, guys, here's the thing about being a whiskey new. What you need to do is find a bougie friend. And share your whiskey. Because they like buying bougie whiskey and you don't have to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think a three and a two finger. This yeah. is still a good whiskey. I would definitely recommend buying it. Here's the thing I like about this, and this is the, my last tidbit, is I'm glad I decided to go for it. I wasn't yeah. super excited with the the presentation of the bottle or anything like that. It's it got a neat picture of uh, Isaac Bowman in there. In the back, yeah. He's yeah. like drowning you in his own mean? whiskey right now. Yeah, but it, was, it wasn't like the presentation sold me on it or I was thinking, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I just kept passing it up and kept passing it up until finally, you know, circumstances being, I'm glad I got it. No, it's a good whiskey. I think people should, yeah. if you see it in the store, you should go ahead and grab it. Hey, you know, it's out of Virginia. It's not a Kentucky whiskey. It's not a Tennessee whiskey. It's not whiskey. a Tennessee whiskey or a Texas whiskey. See, it is something completely different. Or a Japanese whiskey. Or a, a Canadian whiskey. whiskey. We could go on for hours on Or this a one. Swedish whiskey. In the meantime, you guys continue to be cool this week. And don't forget to ever bore up. Ever bore up. <laughs>